You don't hear the terms, please, thank you, I appreciate that endearingly anymore in this culture. It's almost like people just expect it. I, I see at times people send texts to people and instead of saying, can you do this for me and I appreciate that you have done this for me, they just kind of do this and I expect this and there is no spirit of thanksgiving. People are neglecting their, their responsibility to choose to be thankful for the goodness that comes into your life. You have to choose to be thankful. The most powerful thing that God has given you is the power to make a choice. God's given you the power to make a choice. And if you want to enlarge your capacity to receive, then you're going to have to learn to be thankful. Because if you're not thankful and you don't choose to be thankful in your life, in every area of your life, because Thanksgiving is appreciating the things that God has given to you. The things that God has done for you. The moment you start being thankful is the moment that you close yourself off and reducing your capacity to receive more from God. When you don't have a thankful spirit, then what you are doing is you are closing the doors to the people that have shown kindness to you. When you don't know how to appreciate your employer that employs you, simply on the grounds that he, he allows you to provide for your family and you can no longer appreciate that, then you begin to close the door on favor with that individual in your life. When you begin to close the doors on those that love you enough to correct you, having a parent, a real parent, a parent is not a friend. Your dad is not just your buddy. He's not one that you just high five with and say, man, dad, you're just awful cool. No, your dad is there to be a parent to you. And a parent corrects you. And he directs you. A parent guides you. And a parent refuses to allow you to go down the wrong path. The greatest thing that you can appreciate in your life is for voices in your life that love you enough to correct you. Be thankful. Amen. Because being thankful forces you to look at what's right in the situation. And you have to turn away from what's wrong. I'm going to say that again. Being thankful will help you to focus on what is right with your situation. Oh, but I'm going through what I'm going through. You don't understand. Yeah, but you still have your mind. And you still have a heart to want to live for Jesus. And if God is saying that this is a season in your life that he's going to subtract from you, you got to be thankful. And the fact that you focus in what you still have in your life, you're grateful for what you still have in your life. And when you can be grateful for what you still have in your life, I'm telling you, you're moving forward into that time and into that season that you can produce fruit in your season. But if you lose your thanksgiving, you're going to forfeit that season that God wants to give you. I know a little bit about this. It took us seven years to get this building. Seven years. Seven years I spent looking at buildings. Seven years. Friday nights going out looking at buildings, trying to find out who owns this building, having to see who pays the taxes on the building, contact them, send letters out to them, trying to negotiate with them, finally allowing us to look inside the building. Okay, look at how we can repair this building, how this could be the building. Oh, yes, this is going to be the building. Spend six months in that whole array of trying to acquisition a facility, only not to get the building. Seven years and 14 buildings, seven years, and 14 buildings. I never lost my enthusiasm. I always told you, this is going to be the one, 6,000 square feet. We had 2,200 square feet in East Chicago. 6,000 square feet, won't get in this building. And 6,000 felt like huge to us because, you know, we had 2,200 square feet. At the end, when we were in that little building, man, you, you weren't praising God, uh, running all over the, you, all you had was like a little this. Man, we didn't have much room over there. 
Sister Janie said it right the other day at our, our event. That the kids would be upstairs. They would be singing, jumping up on the floor. The ushers would run up. Hey, stop it. The floor sounds like it's going to crash on pastor's head. And so we were going to get the 6,000. We didn't get the 6,000. Then we looked at another one, 9,000. Spent a long time looking at that building. And I thought I was dreaming. I would sit there and park and dream. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. I was wanting to hear yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Come on, Lord. Say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Never got the yes. We're going to get this building. Didn't get it. Then it was one 10,500. Then it was one 12,000. Then it was one 14,000. And little by little, we just kept moving forward and years are going by. I never lost my enthusiasm. But you know why I never lost my enthusiasm? My secret was I never stopped appreciating what we had. I was so grateful for our building and where we started and that facility in East Chicago, that building so cherishable. That's why I'm grateful that we're connected to that ministry that continues to represent this apostolic message. But that building was so valuable to us. We cherished that. We cleaned that. We celebrated that. We celebrated what we had and we appreciated it while we looked for what, where we were going. And if you don't appreciate what you have, you'll lose your focus on where you're going. You got to appreciate the fact, all right, at least I got a job. I mean, I like this job, but I got a job. I got a way that I can make income. I can be a light for Jesus here, but I'm believing for this business. Well, guess what? You'll lose heart in trying to get the business if you don't appreciate what you have. Every step of the way, you have to appreciate what you have. You make the choice to appreciate. You set your heart to say, I'm going to appreciate. And when you do that, you're positioning yourself for the blessing. How do you know that? Because that's what Jesus did. Before Jesus did a miracle, Jesus always gave thanks. The Bible says he grabbed uh, the bread and he held the bread in the air. And the first thing that he did, he said, Father, I thank you. I thank you. When Jesus was saying, I thank you, the devil was saying, uh-oh. Uh-oh. When you start saying thank you, the devil starts saying, uh-oh. Why? Because Jesus was thanking God for something that was not enough. But if he can express thanksgiving and if he can express appreciation, that appreciation was going to send a miracle to that which was not enough. And Jesus was going to be able to multiply what was not enough. You have no idea. You always have not enough. Some of you don't know how you have made it from month to month on the income that God has gave you. But you have always been faithful in your tithe. And you've always always honored God and you never have gone without God has always come through for you somehow it was always painful why because you were thankful